Hi, Mariah. So I hear your question that what you're finding is that if you distract yourself, it actually is easier and more helpful than if you try to pay attention to chronic pain. Is that it? Yes, exactly. So this again is a, a kind of wise balancing act because it's not always compassionate and wise to pay attention to great discomfort. In fact, if it throws us off, if it destabilizes us, as it brings up a lot of reactivity, it's actually creating more contraction. Mm -hmm. So what I have found, and I've gone through phases of chronic pain, is that I want to be able to move my attention away from it in as mindful a way as possible, <laughs> you know, in healthy ways, like to beauty, to nature, to wonder, to music, to flowers, to that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. As much as I need to, um, including to a good book, you know, whatever, um, to create a little bit of space. And that actually will enable me then to, when I pay attention to the unpleasantness itself, have more balance and space for it. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, if you only distract, you're not only going to be distracting from the unpleasant sensations, you'll also be distracting from the tenderness of your heart and from the place that experiences wonder. So, yeah. so you want to have enough presence, but sometimes you need to access some space by turning the tension away for a while. So it's really a back forth balancing. Does, does that resonate? It does. I mean, I think I've been trying, you know, sometimes when I'm in a lot of pain and I'm meditating, it feels like, like you're saying, that's bringing up a lot of reactivity or it's just very hard to sit with it. And so I guess, you know, and I've, I've read a lot about like your work and like true refuge. And so I guess too, it's hard for me sometimes to figure out like, uh, certain means of distracting if they're, you know, if, if they're serving me or if there's some sort of a false refuge too, you know, so it's because I do feel like emotional pain and is very connected to my physical pain, but it's hard sometimes to know if I can treat it the same, you know what I mean? Like, oh, am I supposed to sit with this and sort of absorb it? Or am I allowed to like take a moment and take a break from it? Because it's sort of exhausting to sit with turmoil all the time. Exactly. And exhausting yourself with emotional or physical um, pain actually causes depression. Okay. So you don't want to do that, but you don't want to be on a permanent exit strategy either. Right. So what I find for myself is that when I have, especially if there's an area of, of physical pain in my body, I usually find that more disturbing than the physical pain is the fear that I have around it. Mm, that it yes. won't go away, what it's going to mean, it's going to stop me from doing the loss yeah. of life. So generally, um, we're working more with the fear than the pain, but that too can be exhausting. Right. So what we do is we try to find something that's resourceful for us. It could be an image, like it may be an image of what feels like real protection or what feels inspiring to you. It could be some words that actually you know, a mm -hmm. mantra that actually is meaningful to you, or it could be going outside for a walk or whatever brings the attention to something that's a resource. So you're not leaving yourself, but then you kind of start going back and forth. So you, let's say if you're sitting and for me, a resource would be feeling my belonging to loved ones. Mm -hmm. So I'll bring to mind in a kind of loving kindness way, my connections with others and move away from the fear and then I will dip back in and sense that I'm dipping back in, but from a larger space. So there's a kind of back forth. And you'll find that in both true refuge and in uh, radical compassion, how to move back and forth from a resource state to what's difficult. Right. No, that makes so much sense. It does. It, I think it's hard for me, but I, you know, the balancing act is it's difficult, but I, I do see the merit in it for sure. It's a deep practice, but you know, eventually every one of us, if we don't die suddenly in an accident, is going to experience physical pain and certainly emotional pain. So knowing how to do this kind of pendulating with what they call it in psychotherapy really can save us. It can mm -hmm. develop 
affect tolerance. Again, that's the psychological term. So we actually have the space for what's there. And that's where the freedom is. Mm -hmm. The freedom isn't that the fear goes away or that the pain goes away. The freedom is that there's enough space in our awareness and tenderness that we can let it be there and realize we're not the victim of it. You know, we're actually the compassionate space that's holding it. Mm, I love that. Yes. That's so helpful. Yeah. No, it's a powerful path of practice. I'm, I'm glad you're, you're on it. Thank you so much for all you do. Take good care, dear. Thank you.